Related issue four is the last related issue and or unit of study for the course. And in many ways, it's a culmination of the first three. In the first related issue, we studied nation, identity, and the idea of nation, a group concept, becoming the basis or part of an individual's identity. In fact, the guiding question, to what extent should nation be the foundation of identity, was an important guiding element that led us through the course of study within the first related issue. The second related issue took the idea of nation and went even further. The idea of belonging to a group, the sense of belonging to a group, taken further to the point of wanting, of wanting to become part of an independent state. We saw the ideas of nationalism and in fact ultranationalism and the impact that these concepts have had on history. In the third related issue, we went beyond the idea of the state to the idea of internationalism. In other words, various nations working in concert. And in this case, the guiding question for the related issue was to what extent should internationalism be pursued? And we saw that when we looked at various international institutions, organizations, and efforts, group efforts or cooperative efforts of nations to face and overcome challenges and adversities that the world community is facing. Now we come to the fourth related issue and in this case we're going to build upon the ideas and concepts of the first three related issue and we're going to apply them to a Canadian content or excuse me Canadian context. In this case we're going to consider to what extent should individual and groups within Canada embrace a national identity. So let us begin with the idea of national identity and consider this concept within a Canadian context. So let's consider visions of Canada. In other words, views that people have of what Canada is or might be or should be. So let's again consider the idea of national identity. And when we do so, let's understand that identity, a national identity, involves a sense of a person's identity belonging to a much larger group. And it clearly and when it's clearly defined this identity, it allows people to internalize this, ide this identity. In other words, they see themselves almost on a subconscious level of being a part of or made up of that identity. They affirm it, they accept it, and they promote it. An example would be the United States. People clearly have an identity of, of what the United States is or a vision of what the United States is and see themselves identifying themselves with that vision with that identity they affirm it they accept it and they promote it in regards to Canada there have been different vi differing visions of Canada and what Canada should be and of course one element or one vision of Canada involves its identity in relation to geography. Canada is a vast nation, the second largest nation in the world, and yet it is sparsely populated. As well, it's a northern nation. It is vast, but it is located in the nor very northern part of North America, and so the, its climate in relation to its location and geography also has impact on the Canadian identity. And, as mentioned, Canadians are defined by this vastness, the size of the country, and the small and the widely dispersed population. When we consider the fact that one of the larger provinces in Canada, Saskatchewan, is only now over a million people, we gain an understanding of the vastness of the country and the very sparsely populated basis of that country. Well, there's a, the idea the, or the vision of a single or a one Canada. And that's where people, whether they're of diverse ethnic or racial groups, living together in a single political unit and accepting themselves as Canadian based on the idea of tolerance, of equality, and of governments providing civil rights. And that is the basis, the vision of a single Canada. There's also the vision of a bilingual country. Canada is, in fact, bilingual in nature. English and French are the two official languages. And these two languages are, and these language groups, the people that speak these languages, the Anglophones and the Francophones, have collective rights related to language entrenched in the Constitution. 
Canada is also a multicultural country, and so the identity of being bilingual multicultural is, is very much a part of a vision of Canada. Official bilingualism, as I'd mentioned, shows states that English and French are the official languages and that the Anglophones, those individuals whose first language is English, and the Francophones, those individuals whose first language is French, have basic collective rights that are protected and entrenched by the Constitution. And of course, official multiculturalism is an official policy of the federal government where Canada promotes the, very eth promotes the, ve the various ethnic groups of its country and promotes the idea of tolerance. And in fact, the vision of Canada based on multiculturalism is one of a, of a cultural mosaic. In fact, Canada's vision of a unique identity is based on the fact that it's very much like a mosaic where the the individual and unique picture of the mosaic comes to the various multicolored tiles that make up that picture and these would obviously represent the various ethnicities of Canada. Canada is also, one vision of Canada is also seen as communities and or nations within nations. Joe Clark, a former Prime Minister, had stated that we are a community of communities and so a single nation or country made up of varying communities. The current Prime Minister, Stephen Harper, has stated that the Quebecois constitute a nation within a united Canada, and that would suggest that the vision of a nation made up of nations or communities and nations within a nation is very much a recognized vision. Let's consider some early visions of Canada. Well, in the beginning, Canada evolved from the desire for independence and freedom and that of self-determination. And this occurred through rebellions, elections, skirmishes, and even debates. And so the early visions of Canada have evolved from these early historical beliefs that people should determine for themselves that what uh, their affairs should be. And this is very much a vision from which Canada has evolved. And the whole idea of responsible government, that the government represents and protects the individuals that it itself represents. In 1841, the English government merged two colonies in British North America, Upper Canada, where the Anglophones were, and Lower Canada, where the Francophones were, and did so under the idea of responsible government. The leaders of those two colonies, the French leader La Fontaine and the English leader Baldwin, had a demand for responsible government and felt that if they worked together, they would be able to achieve this goal. And in fact, this successful bicultural initiative, the working together of the French and English communities, became a model for the future and a model for Canada. Well, let's consider confederation because this becomes the next important step. In 1867, Canada became a dominion, in other words, a self-governing colony within Britain and within the British Empire. And this was established by the B&A Act of 1867, or the British North America, North America Act, and it's currently known as the Constitution Act of 1867. And this act of British Parliament actually created some basic elements of the Canadian government which serve, served and continue to serve as important elements of Canada's identity and of its vision of itself. Well first of all it was bilingual. French and English would be the official languages of the self-governing colony and it would be federal in nature. There would be an, over, an overall government, a federal government, but there would also be two regional governments, two provinces, that of Quebec and Ontario, and very quickly after, Domi after Dominion 1867, two other colonies, Nova Scotia and New Brunswick, also joined, and they also became regional governments or provinces within this federal system. Well, the vision evolved, first with the idea of responsible government, the merging and the successful initiatives of two cultures, the French and the English, in what would become the Dominion of Canada, but then we see an evolution. Over time, Canada incorporates new provinces and it extends all the way to the Pacific Ocean. 
Manitoba becomes a province, and also the area of British Columbia, the, which um, was initially a British colony in Victoria, also becomes part of Canada. And Canada also gains territory between, uh, and in time, Saskatchewan and Alberta also become provinces within Canada. But this is somewhat different. These these new provinces are somewhat different than what had initially occurred with the basically equal partnership between the French Lower Canada and the English Upper Canada becoming Quebec and Ontario. And in fact, later on to settle Western Canada, the, the federal government actually encouraged immigrants from Eastern Europe to come and settle and uh, this led to an evolution, a change in sort of the vision of what Canada was and would be. Most of these new immigrants that came chose to learn English and so the Francophones become a minority. So let's consider these early visions and in relation to meeting people's needs. And let's consider the challenges and options uh, that the Francophones, the people of Quebec, uh, come to have, particularly as this evolution of identity and vision and the basic evolution of Canada with its extension to the Pacific changes their view and their vision of Canada. Well, first of all, the challenges. With immigration, as we had mentioned previous to Western Canada, and all and most of those, excuse me, most of those immigrants choosing to learn English, the ratio of francophones in the Canadian population shrinks, and this leads to a decline in Quebec's power and influence within the country. And this leaves the francophones with a new reality and basically three options. The first option is they can accept their new position in Canada, or they can promote a vision of Quebec as a strong, autonomous province within Canada, still remaining a part of Canada, but very much French and very much autonomous. Or they could promote a vision of a sovereign Quebec. In other words, a Quebec that was separate from and independent from Canada. Well, let's consider within this context of options, French-Canadian nationalism. When we go back to World War I, if we consider the history very quickly, Canada become, joins in the fighting of World War I as, as part of it, the efforts of, the, of Great Britain and its empire. And uh, initially, the, the fighting would be voluntary. And so if there were individuals that wanted to join the military, they could do so. And if not, they did not have to be fighting in the, in the military. That changed as the nature of the war became so devastating and the loss of life so great that finally the Canadian government had to create mandatory enrollment in the military or draft or conscription and this conscription issue in World War I led to a huge amount of friction in Quebec and it also led to the beginnings of nationalist sentiments or the, de the desire, the belief that perhaps Quebec should be independent steering in Quebec. There was also in World War II a conscription crisis, and it had sort of built on the tensions that had already existed in Quebec, but because of what had happened in World War I, and because of the further expansion of conscription in World War II, many people in Quebec began to question whether or not it was in the French people and Quebec's best interest to remain a part of Canada. There were referendums in 1976 and 1994 in relation to Quebec literally separating from Canada and becoming its own independent nation. The population, the voting population of Quebec, voted both in 1976 and 1994 on this issue. 1976, it was 60 percent in favor of remaining, 40 percent in favor of leaving. In 1994 it was much closer. The difference between staying and leaving was 1%. And so the question of whether or not Quebec should remain became very much a question that was put to the forefront and French Canadian nationalism continued. Uh, we'll stop here for a moment and when we continue we'll consider the, continue to consider the idea of visions of Canada and varying visions and how they impact on the identity and national identity of Canada.